Hey folks, welcome. Here, we discuss real stories by real people. Today we have the story of a man whose nurse girlfriend was cheating on him. Let's see how it goes. Story 1. So, backstory and a forewarning. I'll be omitting some specific details like names in the chance something else happens in this story, but I think it's already done. Fellas, be very careful who you help. I've been in a relationship with this girl for four years. We met during our early years in college where I was working on becoming a web developer and she was in between majors. We started dating after she got out of a bad relationship and we've been together ever since. Things have been pretty smooth overall, but of course we've had our ups and downs. No surprises really there. In the past two years or so, my girlfriend decided she wanted to be a nurse. She got everything she needed for nursing school and started working towards that goal. I asked her to move in with me a year after that and we've been staying together up until what recently happened. My girlfriend started using my car after hers had an engine failure. No big deal, since I have been working from my home a lot of the time anyway. One day, she calls me while she's on the way home, and she's just bawling. I tried to calm her down, and I can hear that there's a loud clanking noise coming from the phone, but I have no idea what it is. Finally, she comes back to my house, and the car has clearly been in an accident. The left headlight is smashed in, the car is fucked up and has this loud clicking noise when the engine is on. I get her inside and let her just cry it out until she can calm down and tell me what happened. Obviously, there was an accident. She hit a car while she wasn't paying attention and panicked. Instead of like waiting and calling the cops or someone, she just drove off for some reason. She freaked the hell out. What could have just been an insurance swap turned into a felony because she decided the best thing to do was to get the hell out of there. Here is where everything got complicated. My girlfriend was in nursing school. She was in deep enough where it was a significant investment, but not deep enough where she could complete it quickly. She tells me that if she got convicted, she would be kicked out of nursing school, which would effectively ruin her life. Apparently, medical schools and nursing schools have like a zero tolerance policy. If you get any time at all, you get kicked out. It's rough. So, I thought about it. I'm a self-made man. I run my own business. I really love my girlfriend. I told her I would take the rap. I would call the cops and tell them it was me. So, I did. I called the cops and I told them I was in a hit and run and did my best to come up with a believable story and I got picked up. It turns out that my girlfriend had actually not just hit a parked car like what I thought happened, but had actually hit someone who was driving. She didn't fucking mention this either, by the way. Thank God that the other person in the car didn't get hurt too bad. But it was still not a great situation for me, now that I know it's a more serious charge. Still, I bit my tongue since I already agreed. I don't know exactly what the cops had, but they didn't really believe me when I told them that it was me. They kept asking me if I had anyone else in the car, and if I was sure I was the driver. I kept telling them otherwise, but like they would just go around in circles about it. So, I'm sitting in jail for a few days at this point. I've already had my bail hearings, and I'm just waiting for a court date. I get a visit from my friend who lives across the street. We talk a little bit about how everything had been going, how I was adjusting, and so on. I could tell he was trying to gauge how I was doing because he had something to tell me. So I finally just told him to tell me what's going on. Well, he tells me that while I've been away, my girlfriend has not only been letting everyone know on social media that I have been arrested for a hit and run, gee thanks, but also that he's been seeing cars that he doesn't recognize come and go from my place since I've been gone. He watched the house for a while and eventually saw a guy he's never seen before walk in the house and not leave until the morning after. I ask him what he means and he sort of motions like it's obvious. I didn't want to believe it at first and told him he was just imagining things. But as I'm waiting and waiting, it's just on my mind all the time. I broke down and called my friend, asked him if he saw that guy again. He said he did. Now I'm pissed off. I'm stewing in this fucking place for her and she's having people come over to my house after she fucked up my car. The next day, I make a phone call to her and get no answer. She never visited me, never sent me anything, and now won't even pick up the phone. So I decided to come clean then. 
I'm not taking a felony charge for someone who doesn't even care about me to visit me or answer the phone. I called my lawyer and set up a meeting with the detectives who I had spoken to previously. I told them everything. It was my girlfriend who was really the driver, and I decided I would take the charge for her. I worked with them to establish what really happened and basically gave them everything they needed. Because I decided to work with them, they had a talk with the DA and explained my side, so I was able to duck any charges in the end. My girlfriend ended up getting a felony charge for the hit and run and is now looking at a year in county and a $2,000 fine. She's probably not going to make it through nursing school after all. Update. Update on this and my ex's court case. The prosecution ended up getting her text messages which included messages she sent after I had agreed to take the charge for her. Apparently, after she had the accident, she had a phone call with her mom where she told my ex to get me to take the blame. I ended up having to testify against her as part of my agreement with the DA, which was as satisfying as it sounds. She got hit with a three-year sentence for the whole thing in the end. If there's a moral lesson here, it's be careful who you protect. Story 2. I'm sorry if this sounds disjointed. I'm in a bit of a state right now. I was using my girlfriend a five years computer, and I opened an unnamed folder on her desktop. Inside, I found pictures of her clearly having sex with someone I've never seen before. I can barely type right now, let alone speak. She's at work right now. She won't be home for another six hours. I don't know what to do, Reddit. I can't think. I can barely move. I feel so lost. I don't know how I'm going to recover from this. I can't afford to move out, but I would rather be homeless than spend one more second here. Any advice on how to proceed or even just some kind words would be appreciated. Slight update. Once I felt like I could breathe again, I looked at the EXIF data from the pictures. They're from last month, taken by her phone. Update 2. Thank you everyone. I still feel like I want to throw myself in front of a bus, less so than before. But I found somewhere to stay until I get back on my feet. If anyone has any suggestions about how to stop feeling like there's a weight slowly crushing my chest, I would really appreciate it. I have some packing to do, but I will try to respond to the thread when I can. Update 3. I'm not vomiting or crying anymore, so I'll consider that an improvement. Now I just feel empty, like somewhere between my belly button and my ribs is a space that used to be occupied and now is vacant. Time heals all wounds, I suppose. First, thank you all for responding to this thread. You have no idea how much it means to me to know that others, even if they're halfway around the world, care about this. Your collective advice and words of encouragement have helped me immensely. Second, to update the situation, my things are packed and in my car. I found someone to stay with temporarily, although I'm not sure for how long. I took the things that were sentimental to me or reminded me of her, drove them out of town, and burned and smashed it all. It was cathartic. I suppose littering the outdoors with my mementos isn't very eco-friendly, but I'm hoping Mother Nature will give me a pass on this one. Third, as per a number of requests in the thread, I changed her desktop background to one of the pictures. Having to look at it again while I did so was even harder than packing, I think, but it's done. It was unnecessary, as I've already asked her via text to never contact me again. But it is satisfying to know that she'll have to come home to that. To answer some of the other questions posed in the thread, EXIF data from the picture said they were taken by her phone last month. I have racked my brain and surprisingly, I cannot come up with any red flags about the relationship. She is a Redditor, so I'm trying to avoid specifics. But they were taken while she was on an extended trip. Perhaps she thought that she could have some sort of fling with someone she met and I would be none the wiser. I can't explain why she left a folder containing these pictures on her laptop. It seems incredibly stupid to me, but it isn't like they were in plain sight. They were among a number of other seemingly benign pictures. I do not believe she wanted me to find out. She seems very upset and has been begging me to talk with her about it. Finally, I just want to reiterate, thank you Reddit. The support, the stories, the kind words have meant more than any of you could know. If you're sharing a living space, the next few hours should be spent taking pictures of your house or apartment and preparing to move out. Do you have a friend where you can stay? 
Also, consider how much time is left on your lease. In essence, take photographs of every room, especially if your name is on the lease. This way, you could avoid being held responsible if she causes damage during a confrontation. If you need additional time to secure a new place, it might be wise to delay the confrontation for now and focus on documenting everything. Comments There's nothing that will stop that other than accepting your pain and getting on with life. We're incredibly resilient creatures, and we find ways to keep our minds intact. It won't be better tomorrow, or the next day, or next week. It probably won't be better next month. It may be better in a few months. You'll probably be functioning normally within a year. Five years from now, this will be a story you swap with your drinking buddies. And ten years from now, maybe, it'll be referred to during wedding speeches as the catalyst for meeting your wife. That's how it could go. Ah, uh, blech. Take as long as you need before she gets home. Take deep breaths. Puke, cry, yell. Don't damage property. And then get your butt out of that house. This happened to me once in a four-year relationship. Found evidence very similar to what you found. I printed out and wrote a letter, left, and never spoke to him again. I lost $10,000 and it was the best thing I ever did. Don't even talk to her, seriously. Absolutely no forgiving this. You don't need to hear the story. It doesn't make you feel better to know why, trust me. Just leave and get on with life. Block her off your phone, email, Facebook, whatever. Don't give her any way to contact you. Good luck. It hurts like hell, but you do get over it.